Holy crap, you guys, we're only a few weeks away from a total solar eclipse that is going to travel across a relatively huge swath of the United States. It's a once in a lifetime experience. I mean, depending on how long you plan to live. There is going to be another similar one happening in 2024. So I guess really we're talking about a once every decade or two experience, but that's still pretty rare. So if you have the time and if you have the opportunity to go see this, I highly recommend it. Uh, it's especially accessible if you live in Oregon, Idaho, Wyoming, Nebraska, Kansas, Missouri, Illinois, Kentucky, North Carolina, South Carolina, or Georgia. Uh, over my Patreon, I've included a link to a very handy interactive map that shows you exactly where the eclipse will be visible, uh, what time it starts, and what time it ends. Uh, just remember that when you look at that map, you have to be in that dark band if you want to experience totality, meaning the moon completely covering up the sun and it gets all dark and creepy and apocalyptic looking. Here's the problem with those of you outside that band of totality who want to travel to see it. It's going to be pretty tough to find a place to stay. I started looking at the end of last year and I had to fight to get like the last Airbnb that I could find. Uh, even campgrounds have been booked solid for ages. Even walk-in campgrounds that don't normally accept reservations have been converted to reservation only in order to deal with the crowds. And as they've been released for reservations, they've booked up really fast. So getting a campsite has been about as hard as getting a ticket to, I don't know, whatever the kids are listening to these days. Ariana Grande, I guess? Anyway, the point is, science is cool, and nerds are coming from all over the Earth to come and see the solar eclipse. Uh, you might still be able to get a campsite or rental if you focus on places in the middle of the country. Uh, or you can look for a spot outside of the path of totality and plan to drive to it. But just note that if you do that, you're probably going to run into a lot of traffic because pretty much everyone will be doing that. The more populous areas are obviously going to be super crowded, but even the more rural, out of the way areas are going to be dealing with much higher than average crowds. So leave early and please be careful. Uh, I know that's all kind of bad news, but the good news is that no matter where you are in the US or even in Canada or in Mexico, you can see at least a partial eclipse. Uh, sure, it's not as exciting and dark and apocalyptic looking as a total solar eclipse, but you can still experience a really cool astronomical event and be a part of a nationwide experience. It's kind of cool that in this ugly political time, uh, we can all come together to appreciate how rad space is. Uh, and it is really rad. Did you know that the Earth is the only planet in our solar system to experience eclipses? It's because we're the only planet with a moon that orbits in the correct orientation to allow that. Uh, some Christian creationists think that things like that are evidence that God created our planet especially for us. Uh, they also cite the fact frequently that the Earth is the perfect distance from both the moon and the sun for the moon to perfectly cover up the sun during a solar eclipse. Surely that can't be a coincidence that the Earth is exactly that distance away, right? Well, sorry to burst your religious bubble, but it is a coincidence. And we know that because the Earth, Moon, and the Sun are never the exact same distance from one another. We're not fixed in space. The Moon orbits the Earth, the Earth orbits the Sun, the Sun orbits our galaxy. And as they do that, uh, they get closer together, they get further apart. In fact, there's a type of solar eclipse called an annular eclipse. And that's what happens when the moon moves in front of the sun, but the moon is too far away from us to fully cover up the sun. So you get this really cool ring around it. Despite that, eclipses have long been used for religious purposes, not just by Christians. Uh, many ancient religions saw eclipses as portents, usually, you know, of the evil kind. I mean, it is pretty terrifying if you don't know what's happening to see the sun suddenly eaten in the middle of the day, which plunges everything around you into complete darkness. Uh, but surprisingly quickly, humans 
were able to start keeping good records, and ancient astronomers were eventually able to predict eclipses, and were able to get humans started on the road to not being completely terrified by every weird atmospheric phenomenon that came their way. So on August 21st, I hope you think of the scientists that help us continue every day to not be afraid of things we don't know or understand. Uh, at the same time, I hope you remain just a little fearful. Uh, make sure that you protect your eyes. You have plenty of time right now as of this recording to go online and order some special eclipse glasses. They're super cheap. Uh, or you can use some things like welding goggles. Um, just make sure that whatever glasses you have are compliant with uh, the ISO 12312-2 international safety standard. You don't want to go blind from this. You can only look at the eclipse while it's in totality, which means when everything gets super, super dark. And then as soon as the light starts to come back, you slap those glasses back on your face. Enjoy, and remember that if you miss it, you do have a couple of years now to start planning for 2024.